Hey everybody, how's it going? We're back out here doing a little content for you on a Sunday morning. That's right. Surprise! Do more content. Well, something came in the mail. I wanted to share with you guys. No, it's not, an, it's not another lantern. Surprise. But I'm sure you already know that. If you paid attention to the old thumbnail, you know that it's for coffee talk. That's right. I got something that's really exciting to have because I wanted one this big. I wanted a large coffee boiler for camping. And it finally happened because, well, I was kind of caught with my pants down, not literally, but figuratively, of course. Um, had a, a barbecue cookout at a good friend's house, as I, I think I described, last weekend, last Saturday, a week ago yesterday. And uh, I brought my larger, you know, Camp, cowboy camp coffee pot type of deal and I made coffee. Everyone loves it. Everyone likes my coffee. I'm not bragging. It's just they've all told me. they like, oh, Rob's making coffee. Let's do it. So I ran out. I had to make, I had to make, hold on, the dog's out here. Sorry. Make noise. Anyways. So I had to make two pots and I still was caught without not well without having enough so i'm like hmm i think we need to fix this because i know we'll have more events like this at my friend's house in the future i don't want to be ill prepared so problem solved <laughs> did you say coffee ah you sure did Let's see you run out of coffee now. <laughs> well, if you run out of coffee, everyone's gonna be bouncing off the walls. I guarantee that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Well, hey, you know, I've wanted one of these for a while, and this is a good one. It's actually very clean. There is a little minor surface rust, and that's to be expected with metal from as old as this is, I would say this is probably uh, late 1800s, maybe right around 1900 to maybe 1920 at the latest, maybe 19 teens. Uh, it's hard to tell the, the 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 era of these because they made them for a while. Uh, but yeah, I would say this would probably fit into the late 19th century, so late 80s, maybe 90s, give or take. But it's in really good shape and it's really clean. Someone did take very good care of this. And I saw this on eBay. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, that's that's a good one. Not only does it look good on the outside, but the inside is actually very decent and very uh, cleanable, so it's safe to use. Why this one? Well, when I saw the pictures and I saw this nice, strong, contrasting pattern, especially this side, I was like, that is a handsome granite pot. It is really clean, it's really shiny. Can you see the shine on this? This thing's brilliant. This thing's so low miles, it's ridiculous. It's probably only been around the block. And there's no dirt on it, no soot from campfires. This thing probably was used maybe in a mess hall or, or a, a cookhouse over gas. Yeah, or maybe a wood burning range or a coal burning range where it was not introduced to much uh, uh, smoke so but it's shiny so it's it's actually very uh, it wasn't used very much uh, there is some take this lid off again there's some I take it back <laughs> I take back what I was gonna say now there are chips in the rim that's gonna be that's very common that's very expected with these because well the lid and everything you're gonna get chips and there's chips on the edge the lip of the lid uh, but that's gonna happen that's gonna happen uh, regardless just moving around uh, dropping all well, the lid falls off it's gonna chip um, but just from whatever but this thing does appear to be practically never used um, there's some slight imperfections but you know what this thing is shiny as I'll get out it's it's like brand new almost. So, being 120 years old at least, at the very most anyways, this thing is in remarkable condition. Now, there is some subtle rust, which I'm not gonna uh, worry about too much because I can clean it. I can definitely use some evapor rust on there and pff, 
it's gone. The nice thing about Evaporust is it doesn't really disturb most paints. Now, if it's a water-based paint, absolutely it's going to take it right off. Now, something from this era is most likely uh, oil base. So, it's not going to harm it. No, not at all. And especially porcelain enamel, it's baked on at a very high temperature. So the paint becomes glossy and it becomes a, a protected coating. And it's not going to be uh, something that's going to, you know, come right off with uh, the evaporust. It's going to just bounce right off. it, So it's not going to be any problem. It's not going to harm the paint. But the nice thing I have experienced with evaporust with other painted surfaces that have rust, if it's a, a oil-based paint, it won't disturb the paint at all. It'll just take care of the rust. And it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, for those who don't know of Apple Rust, I will leave a link into the description to Amazon so you can check it out and get it for a much better price than most auto parts stores. Um, you can buy it in bulk, and I highly, highly recommend it. It's wonderful stuff. It's non-toxic. It's eco-friendly. So it ticks a lot of the boxes that people want to uh, tick, especially in California, EPA laws and all that jazz. So you can use it over many times uh once it gets to a black color it comes in it, it's green for those who are not familiar with it, it it's kind of a neon green it looks like antifreeze almost um but once it starts getting too dark maybe like close to black or brown then you want to pitch it uh but you can use it multiple times and you can pour it back in the uh, a separate container from the fresh container you have and save it for other projects and until it's just you can't it's too dirty but anyways um this is really cool. Now, you're probably wondering, how do you make coffee in this? Well, first, a little history. I like giving history. You know this. We're historically minded here in this channel. That's why you're here, I think. Anyways, <clears throat> porcelain enamel, granite ware. What makes it so special? Well, not only does it look cool, it actually, this pot stands for something. No, it doesn't just stand for coffee and cowboys and Indians and all that type of history. In the plains, porcelainized granite ware or porcelain ware or enamel ware, which this is a, a enamel. There's no real porcelain in the ingredients at all. No, no, it's just it's baked on paint. So the whole process came about in the 19th century, to my understanding. Uh, no, actually, it started around the late. 18th century if I'm not mistaken but the early stuff became popular because in the lower classes people used a lot of tinware and once the tin coating wore off then you were tasting metal it was not tasty and it's also not very healthy um, so with that being said also pewter wear especially in the uh, 18th century pewter was popular very widely spread but it wasn't also the healthiest thing to cook with or eat out of but when porcelain enamel or enamelware came about, it really made affordable cookware and plates and dine, uh, you know uh, re durable stuff to use uh, while crossing the plains uh, and all that. So you're not using your fine china or whatever breakables you had with you. You're you're using something that's very durable that's not going to break. It's going to chip, but it won't break. Um, and you can just use it over and over and wash it and whatever. But it was safe to use. Now, some people are like, oh, isn't there lead in that paint? Um, no, actually. Uh, some of the other colors, possibly. There's other colors that this came in. Brighter colors meant there a greater chance of lead being in it. But in this stuff, I've done my research. I've asked about it. Some other ex experts about enamelware, and they say this stuff does not have lead in it, so it's safe to use. Because I wanted to know, because I wanted to use these. I love my granite ware, but I wanted to use it. And that's the only reason I own it. It's because I use it. I want to use it for camping. So, as you know, I like to use my antiques. Anyway, this is an awesome pot. And when I learned that you could use these safely, um, I was like, cool. They're like, as long as it's not chipped on the surface you're going to be eating off of, you're great. You're fine. You're, you're good to go. Now, fast forward into the 1920s, 30s. Uh, Volroth made a... Uh, an enamel ware, a very finely made enamel ware called Cook King, spelled with a K. Um, and it's very Art Deco. It's very, it's beautiful stuff. And they made, came in a variety of colors, jade green and black, uh, tan and black, yellow and black, uh, red and black, and white and black. And I don't think they offered a blue. I, maybe they did. But anyways, the, color, the bright colored ones do have lead in them. However, that's on the outside. The inside is white 
enamel, which is lead free. So those are safe to use as long as you're not eating off the exterior surface of a pot or whatever. Why, why would anyone do that anyways? So rest assured, you can use vintage enamelware as long as that there's no uh, damage to the surface that you're going to be eating off of and that it's not, you know, compromised. But anyways, this stuff is, uh, it's totally okay to use. I've had no problems with it. Um, and uh, yeah, everybody I've asked says, no, that's, that you can totally use it as long as it's not roached out and rusty inside and chipped. Of course, you can definitely clean it up and use it as long as it's in good condition. So there we go. Uh, but yeah, so this is what we call a coffee boiler. Coffee boiler. How do you make it? Yeah, you can definitely check out Kent Rollins uh, cowboy coffee video if you want all the nitty gritty details. But uh, yeah, these are easy. These are actually very easy. You have to pay attention though. And it's very important to pay attention to what these, how to make coffee in these. And it, it can make or break your coffee experience because in most cases people look at these and they steer clear of them because not, not just because it's an antiquated method. They just think it's, it, it's only designed to make terrible coffee and that's a misnomer. That's, that's a lie. That's not, it's not true. It's simply not true. And I'll tell you why, because every, every time I've used these pots, I'm not bragging by any means, but I have converted people who love cream and sugar in their coffee to black coffee, to unflavored coffee, to undressed coffee, to just simply black, pure coffee. Yes. And it's all, it's all balance. It's all fine little... Uh, you know, subtle things to do with it that makes it a great experience. And they're actually very simple. And I'll tell you why. How? So you fill it up, of course, with water, clean water, right about here, right below the spout. Boil it. Get it going real nice and strong boil, then you reduce your heat. And then you add your grinds. Now, of course, what you choose to add into the water is, of course, your decision. And that will be depending on your coffee experience. Now, if you choose crack open a can of Folgers, you'll get a decent cup of coffee. Not gonna lie, it's gonna be fine. Fresh Folgers is quite tasty. Been around since 1850. Founded in San Francisco. <laughs> That's right, during the gold rush. So, um, yeah, a lot of history there. And I'll try and get into that on another video about coffee. And so, but anyways, I go to the grocery store, I go to Vons or Safeway. Uh, Safeway Select is owned by Vons as well. So I get their house uh, whole bean, either Columbia or, uh, what was it, Sumatra. And I get the dark roast whole bean. Now I grind it myself. I have an old wall mount glass jar with a cast iron crank uh, grinder. And it's some of the highest coffee snobs some of the most discriminating tastes say that is one of the ideal methods because it's two cones, you know, and they're, they're grooved and you, as you crank, they, they grind the coffee very well. And it's a very effective way of milling coffee beans uh, to, an, and you can adjust the, you can twist the little wing nut on there and adjust the, 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 the fineness or coarseness of your grind. That's very good. Uh, but anyways, I, I grind it fresh. I introduce the fresh ground coffee beans, boil it, and well, you reduce the heat before you introduce your grind. So you reduce the heat to a very low boil, very low, mild boil, then you add your coffee. The ratio of water to coffee, I'm not sure in this, it's gonna take a little trial and error. Uh, but anyways, I like strong coffee, so I usually, you know, to maybe six cups of coffee, I, I uh, add a, a whole tablespoon of coffee for each cup. Anyways, you start boil, you stir that in and then you reduce, well, you introduce more heat to get a nice rolling boil, okay? You wanna get a nice rolling boil, have the lid off and you watch that boil. So you wanna add a, just a little bit of cold water. So have a glass nearby and just add a little bit of cold water to that and it will help it calm down because you'll get a lot of uh, suds bubbling up. You don't want that to overflow and make a big fat mess. So you wanna reduce the heat just to enough where you get a rolling boil, add some cold water that will calm it down. And then you'll start seeing a rolling boil, a nice, subtle, churning, boiling motion or whatever. Uh, do that for about 
three, four minutes, okay? And then you reduce your heat to a very low simmer. Now, of course, if you're doing it at a campfire, that takes a little more skill and a little more trial and error to get the right amount of heat. Now, boiling water over a campfire, now that's gonna get this thing really smoky because you need a lot of heat to get water, especially at elevation, to boil. Um, it takes a while. <laughs> and in the mornings, I'm not that guy to wait that, well, that long, but anyways, that's why I probably make a pot the night before, keep it by the coals so it's nice and hot or warm. In the mornings, you just pour. But anyways, so this, once you get this boiling and it's churning and you got that nice roll boil due for, you know, three, four minutes, reduce your heat to a simmer and then you sprinkle some cold water over the top again and it'll just gently push your grinds down to the bottom. You see these ribs? I, I think you can see them. It's kind of hard because of the pattern, but they're there. Is that style? Well, they do look nice. It's a very handsome, stylized detail. However, it is functional. Everything in this era was functional. They just they just use style to make it prettier, but it's it is absolutely uh, form and function. So these ribs, as you pour coffee. The grinds will, of course, migrate towards the spout as you pour. Just simple law of gravity. But these ribs will help reduce the spread of grinds in, the, in your pot. And they will gather here. And of course, you want to pour slowly. You want to pour gently and slowly, and that way the, the grinds will stay here. And as you can see, there's, there's a, a perforated plate there with holes to, to, of course, stop the migration of grinds. Of course, there will be grinds that get past those holes. But, for the most part, it will stop most of them. It depends on the coarseness of your grinds. With this stuff, I do use a larger, a more coarse grind. Not a very fine grind, but a coarser grind. So, they get stopped by that. Um, it's easier to clean. You just wash it with water after you're done with your coffee. Switch it out with water and pitch it into the woods. It's fine because coffee grinds are actually very good for topsoil. Yeah, and it's actually very nutritious for the ground. It's, it's very... Um, compostable I guess you could say anyways so don't worry about that but um and there's no filters no nothing no no paper no waste it's it's, it's all very green if you will if you want to say that uh but this uh, this is a great method and if you do it right you're gonna have phenomenal coffee you're gonna have you have strong coffee but it's also going to reduce the acid in coffee coffee traditionally is very acidic and so I've talked to people say oh I can't drink coffee it upsets my stomach and I, I get really gassy, and it's, it's just, no, it, it, it's, it's just really bad. I'm like, well, that's because you've had really strong, acidic coffee. Now, of course, there's methods we all like the taste of. Okay, we're not going to lie. French press, tastes great. Pour over, tastes great. However, it doesn't reduce the uh, acidic nature of coffee. You want to do that. You want to remove all that acid from your brew. And boiling it does that. Now, is the coffee going to be like muddy and, and dark and murky and, and, you know, maybe something you could actually walk upon? No, it's not. It's actually very clear. It's dark, but it's clear. Um, but the rolling boil motion, depending on how long you do it, it's kind of a fine thing. You want to time it because if you do it too long, you're going to get bland coffee. If you don't do it long enough, you're going to have more acidic coffee. So three, four minutes is tops. And as it does that rolling rolling boil it definitely reduces the amount of acid so a lot of it is boiled out of the coffee so it's a it's a lot easier on your stomach it's not going to ruin your your uh you know stomach lining and eat it all out and have ulcers and stuff like that so yeah a lot of people some people that can't drink coffee that want to can drink this um everybody that's tried it they're just like i can't believe this is coffee i'm like right it's supposed to be good. It really is. It's designed, you can make it so it's very pleasurable without any sugar or cream. So it's, it's non-fattening. <laughs> anyways, I know. I keep rambling on about coffee. But anyways, thought I'd share this cool pot with you guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you guys again on Wednesday. Bye-bye for now.